We are celebrating Diwali or Deepavali on Kaleidoscope today. It symbolizes the victory of light over darkness, knowledge over ignorance and good over evil. In North and West India, Diwali commemorates the return of Rama with Sita to rule Ayodhya. In South India, it marks the victory of Lord Krishna over the demon Narakasura. And in Jainism, it's the day that Mahavira attained Nirvana. In Nepal, prayers are offered to the goddess of wealth and prosperity, Lakshmi. And for all Hindus, all over the world, including Sri Lanka, it's all about bringing light into your home. So celebrating the festival of lights which falls tomorrow, welcome to Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. Ahead on our show, on our exclusive interviews, are Johan Lawrence, ex-co member of JAF and past chairman of the Sri Lanka Apparel Exporters Association, that's on Selling Co Life, let's talk. Sri Lankan High Commissioner to the UK, Saroja Sirisena, and post Helvetia Residency 2020 winner, interdisciplinary artist Leila Gonadua is on our People's Bank News capsule. And on Singer Life in 60, Praveen Muthukumaru of Fitness House demonstrates working out during COVID. And there's lots, lots more. And a new snapshot of the week that was. Good news with lots of Sri Lankans who were recognized for their achievements. Sri Lankan marine biologist Dr. Asha DeVos was awarded the Maxwell Hanrahan Award in Field Biology. She's one of just five recipients in the world. Tourism trailblazer Hiran Kure was accorded life membership by PATA, the Pacific Asia Travel Association, the highest individual honor in the industry. Dr. Dinesh Palipana was honored as Queensland's Australian of the Year, and he will be on Kaleidoscope next week. 11-year-old Georgia of Sri Lankan heritage wowed the judges with her yellow rice and pork curry menu to win Australia's Junior MasterChef. Colombo International Container Terminals was adjudged the best container terminal in Asia under the under 4 million TEUs category for the fourth consecutive year. Pharmaceuticals will soon be manufactured in a new 400-acre investment zone in Hambantota. Pfizer aims to have up to 50 million doses in 2020 and 1.3 billion of its groundbreaking COVID vaccines out by 2021. However, the vaccine has to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius, a definite challenge. Southeast Asian leaders, including the 10-member ASEAN group, are aiming to conclude what could become the world's biggest trade agreement, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The iconic All Blacks rugby team is up for sale as COVID-19 hits its cash reserves. And men's personal grooming products gets a new innings with legendary cricketer Ravi Shastri launching his own company, 23 Yards. Technology is key in moving forward to transform every challenging moment into a profit where manual becomes digital, business becomes smart and lives become smarter. People's Bank Online Corporate Banking. It's truly the change you need. Sri Lanka's High Commissioner in the UK, Saroja Sirisena, recently drove an initiative in the UK to showcase the potential of Sri Lanka's IT BPM industry. But it is not just the ICT industry she's key to promote, as she told me when we spoke this week. In other sectors, uh, our average worker, even at the lowest level, has had advantage of schooling, which not many countries of uh, our economic level can boast of. If you take Sri Lanka's balance sheet, its human capital is perhaps the most attractive intangible asset it has. So uh, that goes for even a domestic worker to a, a factory worker uh, to our skilled and semi-skilled workers. So uh, education and healthcare has over seven decades has proven to be the backbone of our superior workforce. By upskilling our workforce, Sri Lankans are well placed to tap into the growing need for healthcare workers in the UK. The Colombo stock market has been a little choppy this week but regained its resilience. The indices remained unchanged from last week and the average daily turnover was a healthy 3.8 billion rupees. Oil prices recovered with WTI crude oil up to 41.61 US dollars per barrel and gold remained stable at 1,870 US dollars per ounce. 
These last months have been an enlightening journey for interdisciplinary artist Leila Gonadua, who was among one of three South Asians to be awarded the Pro Helvetia Residency 2020 by the Swiss Arts Council. During this residency, she explored human and ecological movement and migration in the backdrop of the monsoon looming ahead. Here's what Leila says about her journey. The challenge was to uh, reconfigure my original concept that was written for Basel to fit the home country uh, residency that uh, Pro Helvetia had offered me because of COVID. So um, I travelled within the country for months and um, it was all about how the host community or the receiving community, uh, their response to a new entrant and in an ecological sense too. So all these stories and experiences were very different to my preconceived ideas, notions and theories on a lot of things. So uh, this was continuously uploaded onto a blog and uh, which is called uh, Facing Maha. Um, and right now I'm translati translating all this uh, onto paper uh, on a visual scale. And uh, I can see a symbiotic relationship uh, among elements that I thought were jarring. And um, yeah, it is definitely the long road home. Tesla tequila? Yes, Elon Musk decided to sample some tequila, age it for 15 months, put it in a handcrafted lightning bolt shaped bottle and sell it for 250 US dollars each. The tequila sold out even before it hit the shelves. This is when politics goes to the dogs. Rabbit Hash, a tiny town in Kentucky, elected a French bulldog named Wilbur as its mayor. And apparently, he is not the first. Rabbit Hash has had a doggy mare way back in 1998. Only in America. Up next is Johan Lawrence, past chairman of the Sri Lanka Apparel Exporters Association on Selinko Life. Let's talk. With Selinko Life Pension Saver, Sri Lanka's premier retirement plan, start planning for a retirement today. Selinko Life, a relationship for life. Sri Lanka's apparel industry has been firefighting these last few months. When the second wave of COVID hit, it was the apparel industry that was unfairly and unjustly blamed for apparently being the root cause, an allegation not proven to date. What we have forgotten is that Sri Lanka's apparel industry is globally recognized for its ethical compliance, or it would have no customers. It is the country's largest employer, largest exporter, and largest industry empowering rural populations. I spoke with Johan Lawrence, exco member of the Joint Apparel Association Forum and past chairman of the Sri Lanka Apparel Exporters Association to get some answers to the questions that have arisen. Johan, the industry has been accused of a number of things since this COVID cluster problem hit, uh, from the factories uh, having inhuman working conditions to not looking after their uh, workers properly, and uh, even allegations of modern slavery. Is there any truth to these allegations? Sri Lanka Apparel is a world leader both in ethical and labour treatment and the environmental sustainability. Um, our business comes to us from a number of international brands, and it's important to know that these brands have their own independent monitoring mechanisms. These audits, which include third-party interviews, sometimes individual, sometimes in groups, sometimes on-site, sometimes off-site, will all therefore have an independent monitoring mechanism that brands use to assess companies. RAP, which is the big American organization, audit organization, publicly on their website lists all of their locations that have passed their audits, and they have over a hundred odd com individual companies that have been either gold or platinum status. So the point is there is no systemic failure of the industry to, to treat its employees. If there was, quite simply, brands would walk away. Those working in the industry were shunned by their communities when, when the problem hit. Uh, they were not served in their neighbourhood khades, they were not allowed to take public transport, they were even thrown out of their hostels. Um, how do we change this perception? And the treatment of people was borderline criminal and most certainly inhumane. And this is at a time when they needed the support of their communities the most. In fact, communities that these individual girls have contributed to through spending their wages. So it's really quite sad and quite ironic that this happened. It's important to note, however, COVID is not an apparel problem. Global is a, COVID is a global problem and that requires both a global and national level solutions. 
And we are working very closely now with the MOH and the BOI in order to help educate people at the grassroots levels and help tra educate, train people as to how to deal with the crisis of COVID. Um, I think it's also important at this point to, to look at this question of the origin of the virus. And we know that it did not uh, originate at a Brandix plant. Uh, the patient was detected only after a random check. In fact, to date, the authorities have still not been able to pinpoint the source of the primary the primary infection. Hopefully though, you know, we are past the initial chaos and the panic of reaction of people and, and as society is learning to live with the COVID virus, we hopefully are getting to a more tolerant and a more understanding way of dealing both with people who have the infection and people who have either primary contracts or work for companies. So I'm hoping that we're now getting past the worst of this. What do you think the people of this country need to know about the industry and how it is run? So I think it's important to uh, emphasize both the breadth and the depth of the industry. So we employ 350,000 people directly and we touch the lives of well over a million people. We have over 250 plants located across the breadth and the width of this country. Um, just to give you an indication, based on the research we've done, a, a, a plant that employs a thousand people will into this regional economy put 50 million rupees a month. That's through payments to employees, through suppliers, and so on. The multiplier effect of this on the local regional economy cannot be understated. And this is really important because our plants, yes, we do have plants that are located in zones, but we also have plants located in remote areas. Also, I think it's important to remind people that the CSR activities that factories take is just inbuilt to what we do. And this is a myriad of things, you know, from simple things like helping schools, helping local water supplies, working with libraries, local libraries, etc. From a broader perspective, looking at the industry, where does it move from here? Um, after tourism, the apparel industry was the worst hit. Uh, and to date, we've lost something like 28% of our revenue compared to last year. That said, the industry is resilient. We have a history of overcoming challenges. And we're confident that within the next two to three years, we will once again return to be the size of the industry that we were. The, the post-COVID world makes a number of changes to us. A number of our buyers are moving away now from um, the bricks and mortar store. People are buying on the internet and so on. And this is now developing a B2C model where businesses will sell direct to customers. Sri Lanka is really well placed in that. We have an excellent um, support network of distribution, storage, so that this will, act, we're actually working very closely with the government on regulations to allow companies to ship directly to customers. So this will be a significant change in the business model and I think Sri Lanka is well placed to be able to take advantage of that given our infrastructure in the country and our, the number of options we have on shipping and so on. I think the other point of, for the industry is uh, we are moving, uh, building our backward integration. So we have, um, the government has now committed to the Eravul textile park in, in Batiklo and that will be a park, um, an industrial park purely for the textile industry. And this is important for a number of factors. One, it's going to uh, lead to import substitution as it allows us to buy more fabrics locally. It will also increase the value addition that the industry has. We have currently about a 52% value addition. We'll allow that to go up. And this will, and, and it will also help another region, another area which could do with the development. So we are confident that we will come out of this crisis. We're working very closely with the authorities on this to make sure we have the frameworks in place. And we are confident that we will be a significant player in the global apparel sourcing agenda going forwards. It has taken about 30 years for this industry to become a global titan. As Sri Lankans, we must be proud of that. By being understanding of the ground situation, comprehending the challenges and being a part of the solution, we can continue to give the industry that has given lifeblood to nearly one million people a reason to continue doing what they do. Thank you, Johan Lawrence, for joining us on Selinko Life. Let's talk. With Selinko Life Pension Saver, Sri Lanka's premier retirement plan, start planning for a retirement today. Selinko Life, a relationship for life. Next up on Singer Life in 60, I get some lessons on working out at home with Praveen Muthukumaru. Today on Singer
enhancing her life in 60. I'm at the fitness house down board place. And the reason I'm here is that I asked Praveen Muthukumaru about how someone can keep fit during COVID times. And most of the time, you cannot get to a gym. So what can you do at home? So Praveen is an ardent gym goer, but that's not the only reason he started this private gym. He's a former cross country and track runner from the University in the US and he's a certified intermediate level one in the punching and kicking ranges in Jeet Kune Do. So I asked him what someone can do at home to keep fit. So while filming, I tried my hand and legs at some of the stuff at the gym too with Praveen Muthukumaru guiding me. So thank you Praveen for joining us on Singer Life in 60 and for sharing all those tips on how one can keep fit at home, especially during COVID times. So how difficult has it been for you to keep fit during lockdowns? Let us know. Write to us at kaleidoscopeweekly1 at gmail.com or comment on our YouTube link. If you would like to see our past Let's Talk Life in 60 and News Capsule clips, well, they are on our playlist on the YouTube channel and do click on the subscribe button on the YouTube channel Kaleidoscope with Savitri Rodrigo and press the bell icon to remain updated. So don't let your guard down. We must continue washing our hands, wearing our masks and avoiding crowded places. Here's wishing Happy Diwali to our friends celebrating the festival tomorrow. Now. Here's your kaleidoscope takeaway. Light up the darkness.